So it's hard to know who many of the people are on the Orioles. They've had so many different players play on that team last year because they've been so awful. I think they lost over 100 games last year. Ooh. Let's see. For game one, the Orioles will send out Bruce Zimmerman to the mound. I don't know who that is. Says here that he was drafted in 2017 out of the fifth round by the Atlanta Braves at 140th overall, a native of Mount Olive, North Carolina. In 2022, through his starts, um, Zimmerman currently sits, um, no, he has uh, no record, uh, zero ERA through nine innings pitched uh, and 10 strikeouts. Nice. He relies on the fastball changeup, curve, and slider in that order of percentage usage. Um, his, his fastball average is 90, so he doesn't really seem to throw that hard. He's got the changeup, and the changeup, you have the curve, and then the slider. According to these um, percentile rankings here, if you look for chase and hard hit rate and chase rate, you'll see his chase and K rates are actually pretty good up there at the 63rd percentile. So not don't know really what to expect of Mr. Zimmerman. Um, if you remember from last year, uh, Cole Irvin of the A's, that's who he is compared to on the basis of his velocity and movement, for those who want to an opinion there. For the Angels, we are sending out Reed Detmers. Reed Detmers, obviously, he has a few pitches that he uses, the slider, the fastball, the curve, and the changeup. The curveball seems to be the number one pitch. He has the fastball that he uses in there as well. The slider and changeup still need to be, have some development, but Detmers uh, will work on that throughout the year. Uh, Detmers, um, he was picked in the first round in 2020, flew up um, the boards in the minor leagues, and he is trying to develop himself here at the major league level. Hopefully he can become a really solid pitcher. Lefty pitcher, let's see how he does. Let's talk about Game 2 now. Pitching for the Baltimore Orioles in Game 2 will be Spencer Watkins. Spencer Watkins actually spells his name S-P-E-N-S-E-R and not the conventional C-E-R. Interesting. Watkins is in his second season now in the bigs. 6'2", 185, 29 years old, drafted 2014 in the 30th round, the 910th overall pick out of Western Oregon, drafted by the Detroit Tigers. He has five pitches that he relies on, the fastball cutter, curve, slider, and changeup. The fastball seems to be his highest use pitch, according to these um, showings here on Baseball Savant, and he uses the fastball at 34% of the time, averaging 93 miles an hour on it. According to these percentiles here, he doesn't seem to have a lot of whiff stuff, according to this here. Like, you can see that K percentage is only at 2, so he seems to be a pitch-to-contact guy, so I'd expect him to be getting um, a lot of fly ball outs and some occasional ground balls in there as well. He is opposed by Noah Syndergaard, who is 2-0 on the season. Syndergaard possesses um, a very, very good ERA, and that ERA is 1.59. His opponent Detmers, or I mean he, the uh, game one started, Detmers is no record 8.5 ERA. Yikes. For the final game of the series, it's Jose Suarez, who is 0-1 with a 5.19 ERA, and he gets to battle Chris Ellis of the Baltimore Orioles. We saw Ellis in one game last year when we played Baltimore at Camden Yards. Let's take a look at the pitches that uh, Ellis um, possesses. Chris Ellis. A little bit about him, a third round draft choice of 88 overall by the Angels, believe it or not, in 2014, out of the University of Mississippi, 6'5", 205, age 29, so he's pretty tall. Um, last year, his pitch distribution, he had four pitches, fastball, slider, curve, and changeup. The fastball averaged around 94, so he seems to throw um, some okay velocity. Um, he used the fastball the most nearly half the time, so that could benefit the Angels followed by the slider curve and changeup in order of usage. Um, he threw 29 pitches on the fastball last year, 23 on the slider, 7 on the change, and 3 on the curveball. So expect a lot of fastballs from uh, Mr. Ellis. Um, with these percentile rankings, like with uh, the last picture I showed you, Watkins, doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, strikeout stuff, according to that low percentile ranking. 
not a lot of walk. He seems to give up a lot of contact, so I guess we should expect a lot of fly balls from uh, Chris Ellis. And uh, Suarez, as we know, he struggled a little bit. He had a solid game in his last start. Yep. I think it's important for him to have a quicker delivery and Correct. time in the windup and watch for the changeup with Suarez. That's his best pitch. The fastball of Jose Suarez tops out around 95 or 96 miles an hour as well for information on that. All right. Let's see who we should keep an eye out for in the series with Baltimore. Because they have some hitters who can do some things. It's not great, but they get some things done. And I think one of them is their breakout star of last year, Cedric Mullins. The outfielder who, once he gave up switch hitting, has really proven to be a major impact player for the Orioles. Cedric Mullins is rather small, goes about 5'8", 175, age 27. His breakout season, I'll read you some of his stats. He hit, he had a batting average of 291 in a total of 159 games for so nearly the whole season. He had 37 doubles and 5 triples uh, to, to, with a 312 total bases, 30 homers, 59 runs batted in. And he, and he had an on-base of 36%. So Most very solid from Mullins. I expect him to act as the table setter for the Orioles. Um, and he's also really fast on the bases as well. His teammate Trey Mancini, who I told you about last year, teabagging cancer. That's a tip of the cap. Great to beat cancer. And you know what I say. I say cancer. Yeah. It. So Mancini is one of the better... One of the other better players on Baltimore, um, a eighth round draft choice of these Orioles, 6'3", 230, has good power numbers. He's had good success against the Angels, I think, in the past. His best season for home runs was in 2019 when he hit 35. He did not play in 2020 due to the cancer. He had 21 home runs in 2021, hitting... In hitting at a 255 clip, a lifetime or a career hitter of 270. So Mancini, pretty good left-handed bat. Expect him to hit some home run, a couple home runs, and hit for a lot of contact in the series. The other guy is Ryan Mountcastle, who I think almost won Rookie of the Year in the COVID shortened season. The um, 6'4", 230, the first baseman wearing number six, also a draft choice of Baltimore. He has um, had some solid numbers, especially last year. He had 33 home runs, 89 RBIs, while hitting at a 255 clip. So he's off to a bit of a slow start this year, but last year he's really was really good, and I, and I think he might be able to build off the success that he had. And then the other hitter for Baltimore that I think we should keep our eyes out for, uh, Anthony Santander, who I think also broke out in the last couple of years. Their outfielder. He is this year hitting 297 with a single homer and RBI. Lifetime is a 249 hitter and a 1,107 at bats. So I expect him to be pretty impactful. Let's see how he does in the three game series. Now let's talk about our Angels players to watch. Mike Trout is expected back for the Orioles series, and I think he'll play in the first game of that series. So let's keep our eye on him. Of course, we should also keep an eye on Shohei Otani as well. Of course, um, Madden will be batting him lead off again. So let's keep our eye on that. Brandon Marsh has been off to a hot start this year, as I alluded to early in the episode. He leads our team in RBIs. He has 11 of them now with his RBI hit tonight. Nice. Let's also keep an eye on the rather slick fielding Andrew Vel Velazquez. I expect him to still play a little bit more with Fletcher on the injured list. Ow! And I also think we should keep an eye, if he plays, let's keep an eye out for Joe Adele. I hope, jo I'm saying Joe Adele because I really am hoping that if the uh, Baltimore series will be a spot for him to uh, shine and have a few good moments, getting some good hits. He had a solid series in Houston. He had a few RBIs. Remember, he had the, uh, or I think he had a pretty impactful hit in the second game of the series as well. For the predictions, I think the Angels are going to take two of three. Are you sure about that? I think that? we're going to have that one game where we don't look good, and I think it's going to be the game on Friday. Game one, the Angels are going to lose that game by a score of six to four. Uh, 
with uh, the Are closer, you sure about the, that? I was getting a save. I have the Angels dominating game two because Syndergaard has been on fire, and I expect him to have a good, uh, pretty clean matchup against the Baltimore Orioles in game two. And in the third game, with Suarez on the mound, I have the Angels winning that game with the help of our bullpen. The Angels get a tight victory by a score of three to two. The Angels in game two win this game. Pretty, I'm going to say it's convincingly the score is going to be a score of 8-4. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Remember, click like, subscribe if you get to do that. Comments below, and click the bell in the corner to be notified when new content's posted. I'll be getting the rest of the videos up to you. I've been very busy with college, but I'll get the video, other videos up to you as soon as possible. Have a good night. Stay safe. Go, Angels. Let's get another win.